The next house we're going to is one which had some sagging floors and what we've done is stiffened up the trusses, the floor trusses that hold up the floors and we're jacking the floors up. The contractor on the job is David Moore of Structures Incorporated. I've worked with David for about 20 years and we've done quite a number of these type of repairs. So let's go take a look at it and uh, let's see how David's coming along. Hi, David with Structures. Uh, we are working on the floor of a, a ceiling above in a living room that we're putting a new kitchen in. What we found when we started running some levels across the floor is that as we came from this area here, when you went out eight foot and we set the level on it, it was down over an inch. So there was a huge drop going on on this side right here. This was a fully drywalled ceiling. You can see around the edges here. We haven't cut all of it down, but this had drywall all the way across it. But we had to get in here to level the floor before we do the kitchen. We're moving walls upstairs also. So what we found when we got down here is that over here, all of these trusses are sitting on the top plate of the wall. So from here this way, they're nice and straight. There's some slope, but they're basically even at the end. But then when we came over here, and if you can zoom in right here, you can see how from this point to the bottom of this truss, the drywall is sloping at an angle. So what yeah. we found is that when they put these in here, instead of keeping them even with the top plate of this wall, they dropped it down lower. They used hangers. There's about a half, these joists here are about a half inch lower than these over here and also the ones on this side, which is the other floor. That's why when you walk along, you're walking along straight, then all of a sudden you're dipping down. And you feel that as you walk forward, you feel yourself drop because your foot's going down. Then we got started looking at closer and we found out you can see on these trusses here, the triangle comes to the end. There's the metal plate, just like it's supposed to have. And, you know, the triangle is the strongest structure you can have. So that's what we want. We want these triangles to keep the truss really strong. But then we started looking over here and we've lost our triangle on this one and this one and this one. They cut off the end of the choice. They just sliced it up and now you no longer have a triangle there. You've got a, you've got a straight board coming into the middle of another board. So we've lost a lot of strength there. And then, so not only is it dropped down lower, but because it's cut, it's, it's a, able to angle more. And then on top of that, right here where this iron pipe is, or the gas line, where it goes up through the, the ceiling right there, there's a wall upstairs. And that's a, that wall is about 16 foot high. It's carrying load. So not only is our, our span down and been cut, and we have load sitting on it right here. So there's a tremendous amount of problems going on because somebody didn't do the job right. But that's what we do, we fix problems. So we're gonna get it up, get it straight. You can come down here and see what we're doing already. We're using jacks. We've decided on this one because the trusses are all different. Uh, we're jacking each truss individually. And what we've done, uh, what George had us do, or recommended do we do, is we've taken pieces of steel. It's two inches high and uh, 3 16 inches thick. And we, Push, put holes into them every 16 inches, and then we glued them with adhesive, uh, a polyurethane, to the truss. So we have, so after we jacked it up and got it fully level and straight, then we put the adhesive on it, we put the steel on it, we screwed it in, we're doing it to the top and bottom cord of both sides. So both sides of these trusses have been strengthened with steel top and bottom. That way, when we let it down and it tries to bow, the steel is in tension, so that's going to keep it ice and strong. But actually, George, that's what you should be talking we'll about. We'll talk about that. We'll pull that up on the computer program where I did the design okay. and show exactly how we did it. And so we're going to continue doing this all the way across. But we also have to come in and take on 
these hangers that they put here and raise the whole floor up. So we get that half inch back. So we get that half inch back. Because I can't believe that they did that. That's the only way we're not going to have a big drop right there. Right. Now, uh, with jacking the floor, you don't do that all at once, do you? You do that over uh, actually, time? Actually, no. This one's going pretty much all at once over here. Because okay. there's nothing up top. There's oh, just okay. plywood. There's no walls on it. Now, when we, once we get down here and we have a wall on it here, mm -hmm. we're going to be jacking slow. Okay. Because the jack, you know, now we're pushing something up top. Right. But now we have another problem talking about that. We can see where the iron pipe is, our wall is directly above that. Right. But look, if we look at the truss, we can see that there's open areas between there. I can't come directly right here, right underneath the wall. Yeah. And jack on this truss because all I'm going to be pushing, pushing against is the two by four on the bottom. Yeah. So what I've decided to do is we're going to take our jacks and we're going to run a pipe or a post up to the plywood. Okay. So I'm going to push on the plywood. That's going to raise the wall up above. So it's right. going to take care of our main load. But at the same time, I'm going to be putting a jack underneath over here and come back over here where we have a vertical po point and put a jack there also. So we're going to have multiple jacks running down here and multiple jacks underneath the wall. Okay. So that way we're pushing on the wall up above on the plywood and then we're pushing up on the truss mm -hmm. so that it's holding even with what we're pushing above. Right. That way we're not ripping the plywood mm -hmm. and the hardwood floor above it up off of our trusses. Mm -hmm. So we're going to run, run all of that evenly and together and get it all up straight and neat. Good deal. All right. Thank you, David. Okay. All right. Now, David talked about how I did the design of the truss using calculations. And I know there's a school of thought that calculations aren't necessary in engineering. Those are usually from people that fail as engineers or people that are not engineers. The advantage of going in, and in this case, we did a computer model of the truss, is we get to try things to see what works. And we know it's going to work before we put it up. If we use rules of thumb, it might work if I had a lot of experience with doing this type of stiffening. If I've done this probably over the past 20 years, I might be able to stiffen this truss without using any calculations. But how often do you do this type of work? It's not that often, so you need to actually do the calculations. And otherwise, we might end up doing a repair to a truss that doesn't work and have to come back in a second time, which we don't want to do. So basically what I've done is let's go ahead and highlight this whole thing so you can see it. And let's turn off some of these things we've got here. We'll turn off this. And here's the truss. It's basically um, a model of the truss that I measured in the field and put in here. And what I did is I made it out of two by fours and I changed the top and bottom. These, the top and bottom pieces of a truss are called the cords, top cord, bottom cord. I changed the width of them until the truss worked. The problem that I found when I originally did the truss analysis is it didn't carry the dead loads properly on the floor. And surprise, surprise, it showed too much deflection, which is what they got. Dead loads are your loads like uh, walls, um, anything that's permanent that stays there, like an island in the kitchen is a dead load. And whoever did the design of this didn't take any of that into consideration, so the truss deflected. It also didn't help, as you saw where they cut the end of the truss. That probably didn't help things along either. So anyway, what we've done here is we've got two by tens on top and bottom. Obviously, I can't go back in there and replace two by fours that are there with two by tens. But what I can do is stiffen those two by fours so that they are about as strong as a two by ten or stronger. Basically, we've made them stronger. What we do to stiffen them is put a piece of steel on each side of the bottom cord and on the top cord. And actually, again, calculations were done to figure out what thickness of steel was necessary to get the equivalent width of a two by 10 piece of lumber. And uh, actually we've gone with a thicker piece of steel than was needed um, because it, the cost for going with the heavier piece of steel was really insignificant and it gives us the advantage of 
using belt and suspenders. Again, we can't go back to this. We've got to get it right the first time. And so anyways, we've got this done and let's just see how we did with our design. There's called a stress ratio of design. By what we've done, we are up to 40, the loading is up to 46% of what you can put on as a design load. See, it has here a stress ratio of 46.46. And then if we take a look at what we got for how much the tr truss is going to sag under load, which you can't stop that. You're going to have a certain amount. We've got about 3.384 inches. That's a little bit over 3 eighths of an inch. And let's see what's the distance of this truss. How far is it going? This is a 24 foot long truss. That's pretty good deflection in 24 feet. You won't be able to notice it. So that's what we did. And kind of high tech thing for what we're looking at, which appears pretty low tech out in the field. But that's what you do if you want to do the job right. This program also is used for some really complex structures, but you know, the same type of solution used for a complex structure is useful for a simple structure. Thanks a lot. Filming now. Okay. So we have to take the, the truck, the piece of metal out the window. Uh huh. Because it's too long to do it otherwise. We've got to go around all of our. We have to go around all of our post uh -huh. that's holding up all the trusses. So, fortunately, the windows are in the right spots, and we didn't have to cut holes in the ceiling or the walls, which yeah. we've had to do before. Remember that job out in uh, Lithonia? Yeah. Where the trusses, the TJIs. You need to go another six inches your way, Simon. Where the guy put up the uh, real brick instead of the faux brick on that big chimney mm -hmm. or fireplace. Yeah. And then they were bending. And... Yep. Okay, so George, if you want to come back in the front of this, no, just move back. Right in here? Here. Okay. You can see how we're putting that up. Putting it up again. Go slide back in there and you'll be on the right side. Okay, cool. Okay, and you know, this stuff is flexible, so you, you get some bending in it as you're moving it around. Mm -hmm. So once we put it up there, because we have the the truss level, uh -huh. when he puts the screws in it, right? See how that tightens up and squeezes right. all the construction uh, which, needs about? Which is the purpose of the screw. And we're starting in the middle and working toward each end mm -hmm. so that we're not creating a bubble. Oh, okay. Because if you start at each end and you put it in, the last you're going to end up having a bubble mm -hmm. where it's moved pushed inward as opposed to pushing outward. Yeah. So you start in the middle. That way everything stays nice and tight and squeezes really well. You get good coverage and good adhesion. Uh-huh. The empty boxes are our scrapers to catch the glue as it okay. as it's falling down. Okay. We're trying to keep it off of the floor and, our and all the and your, all your other junk. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then where he is now. Okay. So what we've been having to do is where he's located right now. That one was on one of the metal plates. Right. So we've been having if it doesn't hit the hole, we have to apply a hammer, hammer it in to get it to poke through before we can screw it in. Oh, okay. Okay, so there we go. And then when we go to the top one, it's a little more difficult because we, now we have to get it above all the AC, the electrical pipes. 
leave this out there so we have to take the whole thing outside and come back and go up and push it up higher so a little more level of difficulty but there's not fortunately fortunately there's not a whole lot of stuff in the ceiling uh, yeah we did take down a couple ac ducts over there mm -hmm. just pull them loose and pull them out of our way uh, we get over not a whole lot and there's windows all the way around so we can fortunately take it out otherwise we'd have to actually bend it and go around and back up which you know is not as nice it takes more time and effort uh, and at the same time there's a greater chance of bending them out and we're trying to stay safe. okay cool okay here's a job where I worked with a contractor we came up using engineering principles and common sense construction principles to come up with a good product for a homeowner to solve a problem with her house so she no longer has the sag in the kitchen floor and the floor will not be bouncy or anything like that. It'll take care of all those problems and make it a much nicer house. I can't always come up with ways to get things back up into position and sagging floors or beams that have sagged or deflected, but in this case we were able to do so and so it worked out pretty good and we'll uh, look forward to seeing you in our next video.